Hey, g'day guys, it's Adam from Video Show Me How. And in this video, we're gonna be continuing the build on the Isuzu D-Max 2021. This is the third of the series, so check out the other ones if you haven't already. Today, we're gonna to be installing toolboxes from Cane Toad Equipment. And these are those pretty cool swing around toolboxes that get put into the corners of the U. We've got two of them. We're gonna be installing them today. Let's get started. So these are a pretty cool thing and I've been sort of researching some sort of storage solution for the back of the D-Max while I was waiting for the thing to arrive. I'm sure you guys can relate. I've just been rocking a bit of a toolbox in the back here, which, you know, the thing can fling around. I've got some tie down points that you, you can use underneath here, but you know, it's not really a very elegant solution. And, and, and these really caught my eye and I think they're pretty cool. All the details to this from Cane Toad equipment are in the links down below in the description. So if you want to check them out, check out the links down there. They're, they're pretty cost effective. You can see that basically how they work. They're full lockable, they open up, full sort of sealed down here with some rubber seals and there's stacks of space inside. So I'm easily going to be able to fit everything that I had in the original sort of toolbox and what have you in, in a couple of these. And they sit in the side just like that and they're tucked in quite nicely underneath. And then basically all you do is you pull the little lever here as you can see and the whole thing swivels around so that it's nice and easy to get some some kit out if you if you know doing some camping or cooking on the tailgate or any of that sort of stuff it's just a nice easy way of keeping things nice and tidy and then the other advantage when you want to use your bed as you know a proper use you want to put stuff in it whether that be you know picking up firewood or, or soil or you know bunnings runs all that sort of stuff they're super easy to remove all you got to do is you unhitch it and you can lift the whole thing out in in a couple of seconds so Really versatile bit of kit. Uh, looking forward to having these installed. All right, so let's get stuck in to the install. It is probably an hour or two and probably sort of intermediate. As long as you kind of follow along, it is pretty straightforward, but there is some customization that needs to happen to, to get these in and, and, and working. They do work really, really well, as you saw just before, but they are a universal kit. So depending on the truck that you're installing it into and whether you have an actual bed liner or drop-in liner or, or not is gonna make a difference. And if anything, the, the ones with the drop-in liner are a little bit more difficult because you kinda of need to cut some of that away to be able to get to installing the nut certs and that sort of stuff. But pretty straightforward. I'll have all the measurements and the templates, so just follow along. Now this install, I probably would class as more of a sort of an intermediate, and you are gonna need those couple of hours but it's all good. I'm sure you're going to be fine. There, there is a couple of things that you're, you're worth noting is the fact that you are going to have to cut out a bit of a template on your drop-in tub liner. May not be a big deal if you're going to be removing it anyway or wrapped aligning it or what have you, but otherwise uh, worth noting that. There's also going to be a bracket that needs to be installed uh, there and uh, there. So there's going to be a couple of holes that you need to drill into your tub to install the rib nuts. So not too big a deal, but worth noting. Now the tools you're gonna to need for the install is uh, a bunch of draw bits. We're gonna need a mark out pen, Stanley knife. Uh, the main reason for this is to be able to cut away the bed liner, the drop-in liner. So if you don't have a drop-in liner or you're rocking a Raptor code or something like that, you can check a video on a Raptor code we did on the channel. Um, you, you probably won't need one of these, but there's other versions. Uh, I, I actually used a, a bit of a Dremel when I was installing this one, but I tried it with a Stanley knife as well and, and that worked uh, fine as well. Phillips head screwdriver, a couple of spanners here, mainly a 10 and a 13 mil. You're gonna need a couple of sockets, a seven, a 10, a 12, a 13, and a 14. Some red Loctite, a standard drill hole starter, punch i think they're called uh and then and then just your ratchets and that's all you'll need everything else is in there and this is what you get so this is the stuff for the latch mechanism for it to be able to latch against the side of the tub you've got a whole bunch of these smaller ones which you're probably going to have surplus but these are the ones that are designed to fit into all of these grommets coincidentally it's going to be pretty cool because You've now got a bunch of these on the side. So like I'm already thinking I could have a, you know, have a torch mounted here or something like that, or, or on the back here, there's, there's lots of sort of functionality that you'd be able to have stuff 
bolted onto. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then uh, these couple of leftovers, but and then these components here are predominantly for the latching mechanism itself. So first step is attaching our main angle bracket, which is this guy here. And so you wanna get your storage tub, depending on which side you're gonna be installing it. Obviously this time we're installing it on the left, but they are universal. You can see that you can install it on either side. But the first step is to get this in position and it is going to go around. Like that. So you can see the same as this one here. They can really only go on one way. So once you've got that lined up, then it's just a matter of getting the fat type screws, the bigger ones, as opposed to the small ones here. And they're the ones that will screw this bracket in. Now, before you tighten these guys down, the next step is to get one of the shorter screw combos here and they need to drop straight into there and tighten down. And these are your 13 mil socket. Don't have to be crazy type, no maniac type, just, just sort of regular type because you don't wanna strip these roof nuts out of the HPDE. Right, so once everything is tightened down and ready to go, you can put that part to the side for the moment because the next thing we need to do is assemble our locking mechanism, the thing that will actually latch it to the side. So you're gonna need these parts here to do that. And basically we wanna set this up just like this. So these are the two main components and then those screws we were looking at before. The key is to get this around the right way. So you can see that we've got some little countersunk sections on this plate. That needs to go at the back. And then this with the little latchy bit, you can kind of see how this is gonna work, right? So that needs to go on there with the extra sort of room down this end of the bracket. So it needs to be put in just like that. Grab your countersunk screws here like this. They then go straight through like that. But don't forget, just like I almost did, you need a washer in there because you need to sort of space it out so that when this section is attached later on, you'll see that there's enough room for the bolt to be able to slide all the way through. And before you go tightening anything down, you need to grab the handle because that piece there is gonna sit in the, like that. Then you just need to grab the only bolt that would have came with the kit, a proper, a proper little bolt, because that needs to sit underneath this, under there just like that. So if you've got this bottle down, you won't be able to fit it. So before you go screwing this in, just sit it down ready like that and then get this guy in position as well. So you can put a nut on that one, as well as these ones at the same time. And once these two are in position and you make sure you have this one in the right spot there as well, you can go ahead and torque these down. Once again, not maniac tight, just regular tight. So you'll just need a Phillips head and a 10 mil. And it should come out looking a little bit like that, making sure that you do have your spaces down the bottom. You can see there's a gap. The reason for that is, for this bolt so that when that's tight here in a minute on our handle that then sits over the top there like that so you can see we need to have a gap underneath there for that to work so grab your handle that's our next step and we want to grab the last of our nylock bolts that just then will sit on there like that 10 mil socket and tighten him up Keep that a little bit straight, but there we go. So you can see there's a handle and locking mechanism all done. The next part is to install this onto that. So grab the container and you can see this needs to go on the inside. So the handle will sit in the back there like that for you to be able to, be able to go tunk and then pull the whole thing around. So find the inside. In this case, that is going to be over here. So this is the side that we need to install it on. So you can lay him down, grab your handle, and we can see, conveniently, we have four little holes here, and here's our latch. So that just needs to sit in there. We have a little guide screw pin that sits there. You may need to slightly adjust the angle of your straightness of your handle. So just to line him up there. And then grab a bunch of these guys to tighten down into each of these holes. 
And once that's done, you want to grab your little grub screw here. It's the only one in the kit, so just need to find that one there. Then that sits just in there as a little little uh, grub screw to keep this bit from flailing flailing around. I'd recommend just popping a bit of red Loctite in that section there as well. And then two and a half mil Allen key. This is the only thing we need it for. And then tighten that one down. All right, give it a test and see that we're good to go. Now at this point, you can choose to install your foot and that is the rubber foot that goes on the bottom here. There are a number of bolts and what have you that you can use to sort of give this a little bit of extra stability and strength. Now, I guess you probably need that if you're gonna be filling this thing with some pretty heavy stuff, I'd recommend that. The only drama with it is the factory drop-in tub is, is quite sort of ribbed as it were. So bringing it around kind of, you're dealing with all these different heights. So a bit more mucking around when you, when you are swinging it out. So it's up to you. I'm choosing not to put that on just purely because the stuff that I'm putting in there isn't gonna be that heavy. And the next part is probably the, the scary part, I guess, if you've, you know, you're, you're, you're a big fan of your brand new truck and you want it to stay nice and pretty. Understand, that's cool, I'm the same. Uh, you can do this in a way that's still gonna make it nice and neat. It's gonna vary this part on whether you have a drop-in tub or not. If you don't, check out the, the chapters down below because you can skip ahead to this part on where you need to be placing the bracket. If you do have a drop-in tub though, let me show you what parts you need to remove. So this is looking at the tub from the side and it's showing the parts of the drop-in tub liner that you need to remove to make this work nice and well. Now you could probably get away with not cutting out as much if you didn't really want to. I just found that by cutting it out to that contour, it really contours to the, to the actual boxes themselves and it just makes it close really well. You can kind of just push it and, and it'll swing shut and, and latch. So depending on which way you want to go, but this is what will work the best and here's the measurements. So you need to come back 200 mil here and up about 40 mil from the bottom of the tub. And then from there, we need to come up 250 mil, across 130 mil, up 60, across 50, and then up at a 45. And you'll find that up the top here is our bolt that sort of attaches the remainder of the sailplane to the top of the tub. You can just remove that. It's a 12 from memory. Just remove that and this little section here of the remainder of the tub liner, you'll just be able to pull out. So that gives that, that nice space ready to roll. Over this side for our latch mechanism, this one was a little bit tricky and I chose to use riv nuts on actually installing that so we have a nice solid locking mechanism. I didn't want anything that was gonna wiggle around or anything like that and that is just solid as now. So that's definitely the way to go. Now as far as where to put those riv nuts, took a fair bit of fend angling to work out what works best. Just a reminder, this is for a 2021 Isuzu D-Max and it shouldn't matter whether it's an X-Train or any type, that all the tubs side of things are, are all the same. So the distance here from the edge of the tub is 580 millimeters directly across to the center holes that you'll need to drill into the tub. And then from the inside top of the tub, you'll see this little lip. It's down 110 mil for the first hole. And that's this top bolt here. Obviously then just mark out your second one there drill that out for your rib nuts. But that's the measurements. We've got 580 across, 110 down from our lip just here. Now cutting this out, there's a couple of options and a couple of different ways to do it. One of which is a standard standing life. I'd recommend just getting yourself a, a marker and a, a ruler and a, and a tape and basically measuring out those measurements on the liner itself so that you can get it nice and straight. Alternatives to the Stanley knife uh, would be um, a angle grinder. If you do use an angle grinder though, insanely careful and make sure that you actually pull away the tub so that you're not cutting into your tub. So probably a little bit more adventurous. The other option would be using something like a Dremel uh, and something like that or, or a rotary tool that's going to be able to get you really nice and fine with those tiny little mini sort of angle grinders 
uh, and cut it out nice and easily. So up to you, depending on what you have on hand, but that's our next step is to clearance the tub section so that we can install our bracket so it's ready to go. Now it is worth noting that your drainage hole here, if you've got the XT with the, the sail plane, actually it's just a pipe that runs down here, out of here underneath the tub liner, as you can see here, and then to here, and then guess where it goes? Nowhere. It literally just goes to here, so the idea is that the water runs eventually, hopefully, out from underneath. So, not really sure about that. I'm feeling like you're going to have to be parking on angles or something for it to run out, and water's going to be pooling underneath. So definitely going to work on a future mod to have a bit of a right angle going straight sideways here, so it doesn't interfere with the top section of our new swing boxes but then also probably having something so that it actually goes through the tub and straight down rather than filling up underneath your tub liner with water. So once you've done this, give yourself a high five, go grab a cold beverage when you realize you haven't actually sliced your tub in half, so that's always pretty good. The next part is to install our bracket. Now what we're gonna do is a little bit different here again because we have some pretty sweet solid holes already in the tub, right? And they're the, the old tie down points. So we're going to reuse those, but we do need a couple of extra rib nuts at the top here. So this is how it's going. This is sort of one I prepared earlier. This is how it's gonna look. So you can see that there's our two existing tie down points and we can reuse our tie down uh, point there as well. So as well as that though, we do need these extra two at the top. Now these are our brackets and these are the holes that we're gonna need. So for a left-hand side bracket, it needs to go this way because that's gonna go in there just like that. And the same scenario, but this way in there just like that for a right-hand side. So basically the pins we wanna have facing the tailgate as close as possible. So that gives us sort of the flex to be able to pivot the thing around. So these are the brackets we need. Depending on which one you're installing, just be guided by this. So left-hand side, right-hand side. For our right-hand side, we just need an additional two holes and they're 10 mil. So we are 62 millimeters up from the bottom and then a 75 mil between the two centers of the holes. They're the holes that are gonna go into our existing tie-down point mounts. The top section here, it's just a matter of using the existing hole in the bracket you can see here so that's pretty well spot on then it's a matter of just coming up an additional 50 mil keep it as straight as you can so that the bracket sits straight the same sort of story on this side just that additional 50 mil because we're going to install two new bolts here into the tub itself they're going to be these guys at the top they're the the riv nuts to give a little bit of additional strength now on the overall bracket the left hand side you're only going to be able to use one of the bottom tie down point because you've, you've kind of got this gap here in the bracket but that's all good no big deal you're still going to have one two three uh, bolts into the tub itself so it's going to be plenty strong enough so finally it's just a matter of 10 mil holes 10 mil holes and 8 mil holes for the top ones so once you've got your holes drilled just give them a, a lick of paint there as well so that they're protected from any rust get your bracket ready to roll there and then you want to use these existing holes to line it all up. It is worth noting these are unpainted surfaces as well. I'm going to grab myself some color, color match here just to tidy it up. In the meantime, I'm just painting these black so that they're not exposed pieces of metal. So grab your bracket and your hole on the bottom there. It will need to go just underneath the tub liner there like that. And then just screw it in so you can locate the other holes. Now really important this step is to make sure that these are nice and square to your tub. Grab your marker and then mark out those two additional holes. And once you've got your holes all marked, just remove your bracket. And then from here, we're ready to drill these holes and install the roof nuts that came with the kit. Now if you've, if you've never installed these before, there's about four different videos on the channel. You can check the playlist up the top there of a bunch of different ways uh, to install these guys. They're a great little thing. So check out, check out those if you've never used them before. We'll be using a rivnut tool to install these today. 
Uh, like I said, if you want some more details on how to use this or some of the DIY tools and methods that you can use to install RivNuts, check out the RivNut uh, playlist on the channel itself. There's stacks of information and different versions on how to do it. Word of warning here as well, don't go powering through uh, here when you're drilling because the taillight housing sits in behind here and it's, it's only sort of about yay uh, behind here. So just be careful when you do drill these holes not to go smashing through into the back of your taillight housing. And once your riv nuts are all installed, grab your bracket and it's ready for final assembly. You'll just need one of the tie down point bolts there as well, and then two of these guys to install into the riv nuts. And the same thing, regular tight, definitely not infinity tight on riv nuts. So that's those, 12 mil on the bottom. Now it's at this point you can choose to reinstall your factory tie down point. Now I'm going to use a, a different type. I'm going to get one of the ring type tie downs so that the galvanized ones, you can get them from Bunnings for a couple of bucks rather than these ones. So up to you, but you can install that back in place there if you need to, but I'm going to get one of the ring type instead. All right, cool. So bracket is in. From here, you can do a bit of a test fit to make sure you're all good. And there we go. Make sure we have free range of movement, which looks like we're on the money. That should tuck in nicely under there. Still plenty of room for the actual top roller shutter down the bottom there. So that's pretty awesome. So we're good to go. The only other thing we need to do now is install our catch, which will catch down the back, the back there so that when you slam it shut, it uh, has something to grip onto. Now these are the last parts that you're gonna need and this is the locking mechanism or gives it the, the latch side of things for the latch on the back of these to be able to hook onto. So now I found the best way to do this is actually using this as the base. So that, if we think that's the wall, that will get roof nutted on that way. Um, and then this is the component that will sit in over the top there, like that. And then you can see that we have, we squish this together a little bit. You can see there's our little holes on either side. And that's the, what these little guys are for. So basically you make this part as tight as you possibly can. And um, that way you've got some adjustability on how far out this sits from the wall. Now, if you're rocking the X-Drain, this is how it needs to be. And these are the two riv nuts that I've installed in the back part using the existing holes that are in the bracket. And this is this is rock solid. And then using our measurements from there before, we need to measure it, mark it, and chop it out. Sweet, so once you're all cut out here, the next step is to grab and assemble the last bracket for the whole gig. And that's this guy here. So just like we were looking at there before, just put it together like this. For the DMAX, I've found that the best way to install is actually using these two slots as the part that actually attaches to the tub via some roof nuts. That gives you a nice solid uh, attachment point. It is quite wide, so this is the part that's gonna latch onto the locking mechanism. And so once you've installed that, make sure that your nylock nuts and screws are super tight because you don't you don't want this thing sort of closing up, um, compressing as, as you're sort of slamming it shut. Once you've got that, it's a matter of lining it up. So put your storage box uh, in place and then swing it shut and kind of get in behind here and kind of eyeball it just to make sure that uh, you're at the right height. You do have a, a fair bit of wiggle room to play with being that this is quite wide. Um, and bear in mind that as you load up that storage box, it's probably gonna sort of eke down a little bit. So just bear that in mind. Um, then line it up to where the latch is, grab your pen, mark him out, and then it's a matter of drilling hole, hole, riv nut, riv nut, bolt the sucker in, close our storage box. So riv nut time. And then once you're all installed there, the next step is to install your storage box, chuck it on our hinges. Might be worth a little bit of silicon spray on those as well. But then it's just a matter of giving it a test. And it should, if you get your measurements right and remember to eyeball on the side, lock in, ready to roll. 
So there we go guys, all installed the cane toad equipment, swing away storage boxes. I reckon these make an awesome addition and I'm pretty stoked with how they've come out and I think it's gonna be pretty well spot on for being able to have plenty of room in the storage. I'll be able to leave this guy out and fill him up with all the stuff that I normally carry. And the best thing is, I guess, easy to take out as well while keeping a good amount of space for camping and that kind of thing. Well, that's it for another one, guys. For details on where you can purchase these, check out the links in the description below. All the links to Cane Toad equipment and their listings, etc. Where you can pick up these guys, down below in the description. As always, guys, I hope that you found this helpful. Stacks more videos coming out and how-tos for the Isuzu D-Max 2021 build-up. Really excited to get the rest of the kit that we've got over there ready to rock and roll and a few other things on order. So if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell, that gives you a little ding every time I upload a new video on the D-Max or any of the other content on the channel, you can check that out over here. And as always guys, I hope that you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next video. Cheers guys.